Hello everyone, in peace of Christ all of you, please invite your friends and let us have some good time together. Today our topic is about why Muslims and Muhammadan they made fun of their Prophet commands. If you are a Muslim, feel free, you can join us anytime by contacting me in Skype, just text me, the admin are posting my Skype address and I will call you as you wish to join us. If you remember, once uh, Mimi Hijab, he claimed that he can debate me. And I called him, he did not even dare to call. And instead of debating, he started asking me a question, did you say that? And he hung up on me. But one of the funny, funny things he did, one of his sisters, she called me and her name uh, uh, Tahani. And we have her video uh, available in the internet. And he play my uh, me saying to her, uh, you're a prophet. She insulted Jesus and she claimed that Jesus, he was doing sexual things with his mother. Boops. I'm just quoting. Uh, we were not even talking about that topic. We were talking about Muhammad kissing the black stone. And then, well, I said, as long as you are filthy, well, in fact, it's your prophet who said that I can suckle you. Can I suckle you? Then the filthy Mimi Hijab, because he's a street boy, he tried to make me look bad, supposedly. And he played this part, I'm saying to that Muslim woman, suckle me. He said, did you say that? I said, I was quoting your filthy prophet. <laughs> he hung up on me. But the funny is, the son of Muta himself, he go around and he make fun of Muslims and he say to Muslim women, can I suckle you? And this Muslim woman, she is a married woman, not like this uh, whore. She called me and she was insulting Jesus, speaking a very filthy language about Jesus. I remember the Muhammadan, they claim that Jesus is a Muslim prophet and every Muslim have to respect him. So because Mimi Hijab is a low class person, street boy, he said, let us, maybe we can smear this guy. But this guy could not resist the temptation of making fun of his filthy prophet. So he go around and he asked Muslim women, as I ask, can I suckle you? And remember, I said that after this woman, and this is in public, this is in YouTube, not in a private, like I'm going in the street harassing the Muslim women. She never did anything. This is a woman, she insulted Jesus, said that Jesus, he was doing sexual things with his mother, boobs. She mentioned the word boobs, and the video is there. So I said, well, in fact, it is your prophet to order Muslim men to suckle you. Can I suckle you? But what is important for me is not the Muslim trying to make me look bad. I mean, I understand that they are Muhammadan, and they are bankrupt like their God. I mean, even their God, he made a chapter about the uncle of Muhammad. If you read it, it is nothing but a bully. The bully Allah. Allah is bullying the uncle of Muhammad. So the Muhammad and they try to bully me, but it doesn't work. Because I don't go around and say to women, any women, can I suckle you? I will never do that. I was quoting your filthy prophet. And now we see Mimi Hijab going to a Muslim sheikh. And the Muslim Sheikh, he said, the Prophet, he command that a woman, when she sit with a stranger, she should suckle him. Ten different times. Muhammad Hijab, he don't like the command of Allah and his messenger. And the reason I say the command of Allah, because remember, first of all, the Quran, says that the command of Muhammad is the command of Allah. Simply, Islam believe that Muhammad is Allah and Allah is not even Muhammad. Why? Because Allah, if he says something, Muhammad don't approve it, the Muslim, they will not follow what Allah said. Muhammad have the authority to upgrade what Allah said, which does not exist. If you go in the Quran,
you will see the Quran as an example in chapter 4 verse number 80 saying clearly that the one who obey the commands of Muhammad he obeys the commands of Allah so Muhammad became Allah in the earth same time the command of women suckling adult is not just a command in the hadith this is was a Quran which the Muhammadan they claim that a goat ate it which is obviously cannot be true I mean the goat ate it yeah and the goat destroyed the Quran of Allah yeah but the goat destroyed the Quran which is in the memory of the Muslims it doesn't make sense because remember the goat she ate the Quran but she did not eat the memory of every Muhammadan so when Mimi Hijab he made fun of the command of Muhammad and make the fun of the command of Allah which was in the Quran we need to ask ourselves what is the reason force him to do so is that because it's not acceptable this command is it because it's a shameful command is it because Islam is stupid and Muhammad is more stupid is it because Muhammad making fun of every Muslim woman and you don't care for them you know it's very funny that if you want to speak to the wives of Muhammad you have to speak to them from behind the hijab and meaning hijab his name is hijab usually they call you hijab to make fun of your family because they are all women including men so Muhammad hijab his name is hijab last name and now he is making fun of Muhammad command which is allowing the women to show her boobs and suckle them but still she is decent women she's wearing hijab brother I mean this is the only religion in the world you cannot shake hands with women but you can hold their breast and you can suckle it and as you see in the front of you this is was a command in the Quran and the Muhammadan they claim that the goat ate it and I believe strongly that the goat it's not the reason for the verse to disappear I believe that the one who ate it is the Muslims because think about it the goat ate the verse is that a reason for the verse to disappear Any Muhammad can answer? Who in the world want to believe that somebody ate a verse? Not necessarily the goat. Let us say one of the companions of Muhammad, he acted like a goat. Let us say one of the companions of Muhammad, he decided he, he was angry from Muhammad. just assume is that a reason for the verse to disappear like I heard and I saw a video of a Christian person eating the Quran which I don't know if it's good because I don't think it's something tasty in it I don't think it's healthy and I don't encourage anyone to do that but obviously Allah cannot stop anyone and cannot preserve the Quran but you know uh, David Wood he ate the Quran but still the Quran is there but the goat ate the Quran the Quran is gone sound fishy isn't it I don't want to use the word sound goaty And this story in the front of us proves many things. That the protection of the Quran is a joke. 
Muslim reciting the Quran by heart is a joke. Here we go. My Skype is open. I challenge any Muslim to call me and to recite for me the breast feeding for adult. Who want to do it? Which Muhammad Hijab is making fun of it. Why? Because he thinks it is an embarrassment. Otherwise, there is no way a believer will make fun of the command of his God and his prophet. Because as you see, this is not Muhammad only commanding, supposedly, even the Quran. A Muslim asked Mimi uh, uh, Hijab, saying, what kind of mannerism are these? Shame on you, Muhammad, speaking to Muhammad Hijab. Mimi Hijab answered, saying, huh, what's wrong? He believe it is halal. Well, Mimi Hijab, he forgot that Muslim believed too that if he divorced his wife, she can go and sleep with somebody for one night to stand and she can come back to him. And that is halal too. Why Muhammadan are insulting their prophet teaching? Why they put it down? Our uh, uh, sister, uh, Sarah, she is an ex-Muslim, if you remember her, she sent me uh, uh, messages from a group, women a group. I'm going to read a little bit of it. It's in Arabic. So this is like a Sudani group from women from Sudan. So the message here is about Islam, uh, you know, teach the women to have a good ethic and uh, we are against makeup and putting makeup and uh, uh, the one who put makeup she have little brain okay so you know th the funny is they are saying that islam is a smart religion uh, and they say that putting makeup is an act of stupidity but isn't it the Muslim women encouraged to put makeup in the front of her husband? <laughs> I don't know. You tell me. I challenge any of those women who they are making those speeches. Islam Islam respect women? Since when? Like do your husband when he beat you respect you? Do even Islam consider you that you have a brain? You don't have a brain according to Islam. And the funny is that if a Muslim woman she put a makeup, that make her stupid. But if a Muslim woman she give her breast to suckle them to a stranger, that make her smart. If a Muslim woman, she take care, actually just to show you the stupidity of Muhammad. Remember, they are saying Muslim women should not have makeup. Hmm. Let us see what Muhammad, he said. If you add hair to your hair, Allah curse you. If you add tattoo, Allah curse you. If you take hair from your eyebrows, Allah curse you. Read with me. I'm not adding things, you know. This is your and I and, and forget about the one it says da'if. Read only the one it says sahih. All right, just to not, you know. So, uh, this is Sahih. Okay. Let us see what is a shameful for Muslim women to do. Sharpening the end of the teeth. <laughs> Tattooing, blacking hair. <laughs> And then for men, men sleeping together without under and undergarment. Women 
sleeping together without undergarment. Men put in silk at the bottom of their garment, like the Persians, or put in silk in their shoulder, like the Persians. Uh, you know, did you see him in a hijab wearing jeans, have holes in it when he was interviewing, uh, uh, you know, uh, what his name, the hole in the narrative, Yasser Kadhi? This is the, so if you if you try to wear clothes like the foreigners, like the kuffar, you are a bad person. Allah will curse you. But let us focus in the in the women for now. Uh, if a woman she black hair, she is a shameful person. It's forbidden, and not only shameful, she will end to go to hell. All right, let us go and see more of the intelligence of Muhammad. As you see, taking hair, taking hair, taking hair, taking hair. All of this is about taking hair. And again, the one it is da'if, we will not take it. We will take the one only it is sahih, even though the da'if is accepted. Uh, Ibn Abbas said, the women who supply false hair and the one who ask for it, the women who pulls out hair from other people, uh, uh, you know, to display it herself, the women who tattoo, uh, all those women, you know, you know, they will go to hell. Read carefully with me. Again, we will read only what is a sahih. The women who supplies hair and the one who asks uh, for it. What if a woman she lost her hair? Why? Why? What? What is the problem? You see, when a human being, he wear, uh, like the Arab, the they, uh, the skin, the sheep, and they make the sheep skin a coat. But isn't it, this is adding something to your body? Isn't it, this is a fur? Does it make a difference if you put it in your head or put it in your shoulders? And what if a woman, she lost her hair? Why, why it's an... A shame for her to do so and then he continue he says women who tattoo uh, me myself I'm against tattoo you know because God gave you your body uh, as it is you give it back as you receive it but here you not you notice that the funny thing about the, the whole story uh, like the one who take hair from between her eyebrows she is cursed to uh, if you ask the Muhammadan what is the wisdom in this, they say to you, because you are changing the way Allah He made you look like. But is it circumcision? Is it changing the way Allah make you look like? Why Muhammad he can shave his mustache? Isn't it this is how Allah He made you look like? Why Muhammad used to do sugar to change to take hair from his skin, like Muhammad Hijab he did? When he went in the front of the American uh, uh, Chinese embassy, you will see he took off his uh, T-shirt. This guy, he, he he's a stripper. He liked to show off his uh, stupid uh, chest, which is, I mean, there is even no muscles there. He looked like a kid, fat kid. So uh, uh, he take off his T-shirt, and you can compare between the previous picture and that picture, and you will see that he did sugar. He took, he shaved his chest hair. His body hair. So how if the women she take from her body hair, so she will look better? I mean, who who of you Muslims like to have a woman she have a mustache? Who of you Muslim men like to have a woman she have a beard? Be honest. In fact, all of you Muslim women they do take hair from their body, especially Middle Eastern women. They are very hairy. If you don't do that. They would look like men. So how come the man he can take hair from his body, but the woman she cannot take hair from her body? Any Muhammadan? Very simple question. I'm not asking you for much.
Anyone? When Muhammad he said that women are naqisat wa aqlin wa deen, and Muhammad he said that women who are leaders, nation who have a woman as a leader, will never succeed. Was Muhammad succeed as a leader? Let us take a look at what Muhammad's success was. Just think about it. He destroyed his own family. His disciples, if we can call them disciples, they are nothing but gang. They kill each other, all of them. Not a single caliphate was not killed by the Muslims. His own family was killed by Muslims. His own daughter was killed by Muslims. The baby in her belly was killed by Abu Bakr. Some they say Omar. What is the success of Muhammad? Muhammad established a very filthy society. When Muhammad he says the man he can lie to his wife and the woman she can lie to her husband, this is this is the ethic of Muhammad. But a woman taking hair from her face is a bad ethic of a Muslim woman. So Muhammad is like a scumbag. He tried to make of uh, you know like you know, like you go to a place. Let us say you go inside the palace. And the palace is perfect and then you find a mosquito on the wall see so see this is disgusting but then you go to the bedroom of muhammad you will see all the dirty flies if you go and read and study the community the community of muhammad you will see the conspiracy of the muslims against each other abu Bakr and omar and ali even aisha she took an army and caused the death of more than 10,000 people to kill Ali. This is Aisha, the one we say she is a kid. After Muhammad he died, now she became a leader. Imagine she took an army to kill Muhammad, who married his stepdaughter, Fatima. The Muslim they claim Fatima is his real daughter. I believe strongly Muhammad, he cannot have kids. And I believe even Muhammad, he never have a penis to function. And even the Quran confirmed that, that Muhammad, he don't have a, his penis have a problem. And actually, I believe strongly too, that the main reason of Muhammad is speaking about his power of sex, because he, you know, he's trying to cover up a problem he have. You know, uh, people who have a strong drive in sex, why they want to go in the street and tell people what they do? especially you are a prophet of God. So look, a woman, she take care from her eyebrows, she will go to hell. Muhammad going around and telling them what he did in the bed with his wives is okay. The funny, there's even a hadith. Muhammad himself, he says that the man who, or the women, who leak a secret between what happened to them inside and then under the ceiling, which means whatever they do, are bad people, but he is the first one to do it, including Aisha. Even Aisha should describe how the Prophet he sucked her tongue, how he kissed her, how he fondled her, how he put his penis between her legs. Let us see if we can get some Muslims. Okay. Let us see. Hannibal Hanif. Uh, no. Let us see. Maybe this is a Muslim. Let us give him a try. <clears throat> Again, if you are a Muhammadan, please, please feel free to join us. We would like to have a nice discussion with you about your cult. Well, he is not answering, so maybe we should ignore him. Hello? Hello? 
Hello? Maybe it's a Fakira or something. Hello? Yeah, Fakira, son of Muta. I mean, this is an example, by the way, of how Islam is a failure. This guy, Fakira, uh, he even said the F word to his prophet. He don't accept any statement of his prophet written in the Muslim books. And there is one reason for such a behavior. They are angry to see what Muhammad said. So they go in denial and then they try to bury it. They think by saying we don't accept it, that go through. And one day when I ask him, so who is Muhammad? Who is his wife? He gave me the name. Who is his father? He gave me the name. I said, where do you get this information from? He's in trouble. He's books of history. <laughs> but the only books that speaking about those things is the Muslim books, which is the Hadith. So Muslims, because they are ashamed of what their prophets said, they try to deny what Muhammad said and what Muhammad did. You know, the books of Hadith is one of the most hilarious proof that Muhammad is a fraud. Look with me. The one who black hair hair. If we ask any Muhammadan who have little brain or big brain, why if a woman she black hair from her eyebrows until she make it sin, or the one like here they're attacking Mutanamisa, you know. Why, why, why Allah will be upset? Give me a reason. How come Muhammad he can't take care from his face, but Muslim women cannot take care from their face? Who is the female? Is it Muhammad or Allah or the women? Anyone? Yeah, and by the way, remind me, this uh, scumbag, somebody told me that he called David Wood, and he said in Arabic, the Bible, the, the word Injil is an Arabic word. I never said that. Somebody asked me if the word, when the Arab Christian, they use the word Injil, is that correct? I said, yes. But this is not an Arabic word, stupid idiot son of Muta. I never said that. I have tons, actually, even in speech with him, I said, this is a Greek word, son of Muta. So, I, and this is the same like in, in the Middle East now. They say computer, they say iPhone, they say Android. But does that make it Arabic word if they say Android and write it even in Arabic? Stupid, silly, and they have no dignity. They lie about what you say. So Muhammad can take hair from his body. Muhammad put eyeliner. You see, even they say that the women who do uh, 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 what they call it tabarruj should display her beauty in public. She is a bad woman. Actually, Muhammad, he said that a woman who come with the perfume she is a whore. Is that correct, Muslims? Is that correct if a Muslim woman, she put a perfume when she go out, she is a whore? Name for me one Muslim woman, she don't put perfume when she go out. Any one of you been in Islamic countries? Go and walk in the street and check the gas they use, they put on them. I don't call it perfume, I call it gas because it's a perfume that kind will kill you because the smell is so strong and so disgusting. 
But Muhammad put perfume. Muslim men put perfume. How come the women, if she put perfume, she is an adulteress? They say, oh, well, the women, she is trying to get attraction. Well, oh, oh, okay. So if the women, she put a perfume, she's trying to attract men to her. When a man, he put perfume, he's trying to attract men to him or women. Do you see how stupid the stupidity of this cult work? Why a Muhammadan he can put perfume in public, but a Muhammadan woman she cannot? If the purpose is not to seduce others by perfume, and I don't know how that will work, because we are not cats and dogs. We sniff the ass of each other. Are you getting to be activated sexually by a smell? Are you a dog? When you see a female, you sniff her under her tail and you get excited? So why the man and why Muhammad? Muhammad, you have even favorite perfume. He don't even move the house without it. Especially now he is rich from stealing money from the Jews. Any Muhammadan? Muhammad, he focus in silly stuff for he is a person with zero ethic. But it's a shame for a woman to have a perfume, but it's not a shame for women to give her boobs to a stranger. Hmm? Any Abdul? Actually, I remember there's a hadith claiming that the sweat of Muhammad is a perfume and the wives of Muhammad, they used to spray themselves from his perf from his sweat and you know first time i heard i saw this hadith i know i was really young uh maybe i was 90 at that time uh, i saw it and i said to myself i mean how you can save the sweat of somebody i mean is uh, like guys have you ever heard of somebody I'm not going to ask if the sweat smells good or not, but Muhammad is sweat, and then we collect the sweat in bottles and we use them as a perfume. Why Muhammad was dropping like a faucet? Let me find the hate as long as we mention it, otherwise, the Muslim they might say, Oh, he's making things up. Give me a second. I need to remember. I don't remember the details of the hadith. Uh, I need uh, hey, Jibreel, can you come and uh, squeeze? Uh, you know, brothers and sisters, my wife she have a grape and she is going to squeeze me. <laughs> okay, I remember now. I mentioned it. That way I got the hadith. Hold on. All right. Oh, I cannot find it here. Hold on. Let us see the front one. Oh. That's weird. I cannot find it in the English website. <clears throat> okay well it's weird because this is uh, this is in the book of Sahih Muslim and supposedly this website has um, has uh, Sahih Muslim but look like they took it off let us see if we can find it
Give me a second. All right. Here we go. I found it actually, but I did not find it uh, in the Muslim website. But let me show it to you on the screen. <clears throat> I will take a screenshot for a translation. I have the hate in Arabic, but for some reason it's not showing in this website. So here, the hadith is saying. Look, look what they are saying about their prophet. <laughs> Once, you can read the first part, it's funny, but I'm going to read the second part. Once the prophet, P-B-U-H, came to our house and slept. He was in his sweat. My mother, brought a bottle and was trying to fill the bottle with his sweat then he walks he woke up and asked ummu salim ummu salim what are you doing she said oh messenger of allah your sweat i will mix it with our perfume your sweat is the best smell As I remember, the hadith doesn't say we will mix it. It says, نَجَعَلُهُ لَطِينَ which means we will make it, uh, uh, we will not mix it with perfume, no. Uh, like, we, we will make it perfume. We will use it as a perfume. Here they are saying mix. So I'm assuming translation is not really accurate. Uh, so they are collecting his sweat and how in the world you can collect his sweat? I mean, this guy was uh, like sweating like a pig, as they say. But here you notice uh, how those people, they worship this man. If this is true, I mean, this is disgusting. You know, we have hadith about Muslim fighting over his underwear, uh, laundry, uh, Muslims fighting over his spit, spitting, when he spit uh, over his boogers. Uh, Erdogan, he have a hair claiming that he, this is the hair of Prophet Muhammad. And actually, they call it the holy hair of the holy prophet. Uh, what is the reference? Uh, give me a second. Let us give me the exact, exact reference in the Arabic hadith. As you see, I could not find it in English. But this should be in Sahih Muslim, as I remember. Give me a second. Okay, open this link and you will find the reference, all those hadith. It's in Arabic, but you can use Google, like in uh, Google translation, and sorry, in uh, uh, Sahih Muslim, is coming as reported by Anas ibn Malik, Sahih Muslim, page number 2331. All right, so this is Sahih Muslim. Let me give you a link so you can uh, check it out yourself and you can see it. It's available in Muslim 2331. Well, I don't know why when I search in the Arabic website, I mean, using the Arabic text, it doesn't show. Let me let me see if that's uh, true. Uh, okay, look like it's there. Are you all right? Yeah, here we go. So here we go. We found it in English. Thank you, the one who helped. 
<clears throat> so as you see here, uh, they are they are translating as we mix it in our perfume, and it become the most frequent perfume. The sweat of Muhammad. You know, sweat is nothing but a, a form of urine. Sweat is a form of urine. Simply, it's your dirt. That's why it smells. The Muslim, they are collecting the sweat of Muhammad and making it as a perfume. Uh, let me see. Uh, let us see here. I found a website here. A Muslim asking, why if a Muslim woman, she have a perfume, she will go to hell? And she go in public. Let us read together. Now remember, Google translation is not too much accurate, but it will do the job. Uh, here it says, uh, there's no doubt about the exit of women uh, wearing perfume so that men find her scent is forbidden and some scholar consider it as a major sin when Abu Dawood and Atrimudi took it uh, like speak of it it says that the Prophet of Allah he said uh, every eye is an adulterer and if a woman perform herself and pass through the assembly she is such and such which means she is a whore meaning adulterers and here the muslim trying to make muhammad not to say the arabic word he said charmuta charmuta so she is a charmuta and the muslim they replace the word with adulteress all of this because she have perfume muslims is muslim men allowed to wear perfume in public The answer is, do men walk in public and there is women in public? Yes. So if the women, she is seducing men by uh, perfume, is that what your prophet do? He seduce men? by perfume any Mohammedan if the perfume will seduce people sexually why Muhammad and Muslim men they with perfume hmm? In fact, Muhammad, he ordered Muslim men, especially in the day of a Friday, to do so. And Muhammad himself, he loved perfume, the expensive one, you don't pay for it anyway. I can't find the hate in our in in, in the, this website, but let us find it in different place. No doubt. No. Uh, let us see. No, not this one. We want. Hold on. Give me a second. Uh, let's see.
Mm. Okay, let's see this one. Here we go. This is a hadith saying that Muhammad never received, never received a perfume and he refused it as a gift. Never, never. And this is Sahih hadith. Never receive any perfume and he refused it. Let us use Google Translation. Let us zoom out a little bit so you can see most of the page. Hmm? He never rejected perfume. Translation is not too much coming good. Uh, yeah, the translation for the word perfume is not coming right. Actually, here it shows here only. Uh, perfume was one of the most beloved things to the Prophet. Do you see it? Okay. Do the Prophet go outside with perfume? Yes. But isn't it the one who have a perfume is an adulteress? trying to seduce others and here you see how awkward and stupid this religion is the man he can take care from his face is okay the woman she cannot the man he can have perfume the woman she cannot in public. The only time you can have perfume in front of your husband because you are his sex toy. But your husband, he can have perfume in front of everybody. Muhammad ordering women to give their boobs to strangers. You have no shame on that. Let us see if we have any. If you are a Muslim, tell me you are a Muslim when you text me. Otherwise, I will not text you back. All right. Let us see. We have somebody. This guy, he called himself Imam. I called him. He declined my call. What kind of imam does imam decline my call? So why you text me? Do we have any Muhammadan? What the difference between Shia and Sunni? There is no difference. Both of them, they are, they hate you. Both of them, they consider you the enemy of Allah and they should kill you. Uh, the difference is uh, they hate each other to death. They kill each other non-stop and uh, the muslim sunni they consider shia not muslims and the muslim shia consider sunni not muslims in fact both of them they are not muslims and i can prove it so easy that none of the muslim sunni or shia or muslim actually it's right in front of you what is the topic today mimi hijab is making fun of what of allah command not muslims there is no Muslim will make fun of his prophet command. They are not. Find me one Muslim, he can even practice Islam. Nobody can practice such a stupid cult. This man, Muhammad, is crazy. Who is a Muslim man? He will accept his wife to have mustache. Nobody. If you see a woman, Muslim woman, she have a clear hair in between her eyebrows. She have a clear and like, you can tell she did take care from her eyebrows. Obviously, she don't believe in Islam. But I never saw a Muslim woman, she didn't do that. If you see a Muslim woman, she have a beard, she have a mustache, she have hair, thick eyebrows, then this is really a true believer. As simple as that.
But I never saw a Muslim woman is a believer. Same for Muslim men. We just showed you the hadith that the man who dressed like the kuffar, he is one of them. How Yasser Qadhi he dress? How Zakir Naik he dress? How Mimi Hijab he dress? He wear jeans, have holes. I mean, you don't have a shame. This is not even good for teenage. I saw his video with Yasser Qadhi. He was wearing jeans, have holes in it. Go watch it if you don't believe me. Uh, my Muslim friend is confused. Okay, let us see what uh, this comment is saying. My Muslim friend is confused uh, with why did Jesus say it? He was the same with the Father, but not saying I'm God. He did not say the same with the Father. Jesus, he said, I'm trying just to understand what you are saying. When one of the disciples of Jesus said to him, show us the Father and that's it, which means show us God. So he said to him, I am with you all the time and you do not know me. The one who saw me, he saw the Father. So who said that Jesus did not say I'm God? He just said he just said, I am the visible image of the invisible God. Do I need to say certain words? Can Muhammad say the one who saw me, he saw Allah? No. Why? Because Muhammad is not God in Islam. This, the, the second you say that, you are claiming to be God. You are making a statement, a clear statement, you are God. Me and the Father is one, that's it. I mean, one. You saw me, you saw the Father. So when the Muhammadan, they say, like Zachary Naik says, Brother Thitter, I turn the Christian. If they can tell me one verse in the Bible, it said that this is saying, I'm God worship me. You can find a verse in the Bible. When the whole Bible is Jesus saying, I'm God, worship me. And even the Muhammadan, they stole the names. Muhammad himself, he stole names of Jesus. He gave them to Allah. If we ask the Muslims, who is the truth? They say Allah. Why he is? They say he's God. Okay. Jesus said long before this big God, Allah, I am the truth. Who is the life? Allah. Jesus said long before Allah, Aka Muhammad, I am the life. Who is the resurrection and the resurrector? They say Allah. Well, Jesus says, I am the resurrection. <laughs> Who is the Alpha? Who is the Omega? They say God. And that is Jesus. And then they say to you, where Jesus says, I'm God. Muhammadan are very silly. Uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, a Muhammadan is like a sausages, but it doesn't have uh, meat inside. You know? There's no meat. It's just like uh, dirty mud. And the Muhammadan, what I like about them, when they play dumb, like, oh, well, Jesus says, I'm God, will save me. We didn't, we didn't say that, you know? And the funny thing about the Muhammadan, it, okay, the Quran says Holy Spirit. They say Jibreel. Okay, what Quran says Jibreel is the Holy Spirit? They say, you do not need to see it. You do not need to say it directly. Okay, so how come you come to the conclusion that this is a real? I mean, you do not need to say it directly. Okay, what is the word Tawheed in the Quran? He did not need to say the word Tawheed in the Quran. What the heck? Do we have any Muhammadan? Oh, the, the Imam, he was praying. He said to me, he was praying. He declined my call. Was he praying? Hello? Hello? Fakira, here we go. 
that right away he's, she said the F word, Fakira, the son of Muta. <laughs> First of all, one of the signs of liars is to be Muslims. Like to be a Muslim, to be a liar. Why you are lying? Why you are changing your name? Unless you are a filthy like your prophet. And right away she called me and she said the F word. Filthy, trashy. Why I want to even speak to someone low class like you? You don't. You are not even equal to my socks, which I took off ten years ago. I will lower myself if I speak to you. And we have enough recording of you people. They can watch it and die laughing at you, especially when you said the F word to your prophet. Yeah, Imam Jaffa. He's she is Imam Jaffa, and he was busy praying. He's praying. Do you read the Hadith prayer or the Quran prayer? <laughs> he is so, she is so angry. <laughs> stay, stay as you are. Coward. Actually, I believe strongly he used filthy words in order to hang up on him so he can claim that he have victory. But I have no use of you, no more. I cleaned my shoes a thousand times with your face. We had enough of you. Do we have a real Muslim? And you know, the funny is, like I asked this girl, Fakira, uh, ultimate fort, uh, Rashad Khalifa, he took a verses from the Quran. He said he took only what is not there. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen carefully. He took off only what is not there, <laughs> which means he admitted that the Quran is corrupted for the last 1400 years. And then a boy from Pakistan who did not know even how to read Arabic good, he came to correct the corruption of the Quran. So he took off what is not there. Allah could not take it off. The guy who is in Arizona, he was able to take it off. He took off what is not there. It's recorded. Go and watch it. And you know, as long he took off what is not there, tomorrow somebody else will took some more, which is not there. Do we have any Abdullah or Abdul? Anyone? You know, uh, yesterday it was a women's day. And you know, for me, I don't really care for those stupid names. And I have my reasons. You see, if you want to respect a woman, you don't respect her by making a day for her. All those are just commercial. Mother Day, Father Day, Sunday, Daughter Day. Even Christmas became commercial. So we don't want to fool ourselves with those stupid days. If a man respect his wife, he love his wife, he make every day her day. Same for the women. If she love her husband, she will make every day in her life his day. Advertising, uh, there's advertising, only 2% of women write songs. Commercial for the speakers of Boss. It's time to, fl to, to flip the thing, or the click, whatever. I mean, look how stupid is that? Okay, if there's only 2% of songs writers are women, how you can flip the clock? I mean, as long as there is 2% we're able to write songs, it's mean if they want, they can write, they can be four, they can be five. It's mean there's a place for them. Very silly. You know, we don't want to be politically correct and be stupid. And then you will see articles that women, she would be strong if she's wearing sexy lingerie. And then an article says, women should be equal like men and grow hair under their arms. Please do. You know this is this is silly and stupid even it's it's like it's 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 a disrespect for women you're not respecting women 
In fact, you are humiliating women by making women to say that women is not respected and you are going to make it happen. That means women, she was a failure. She could not make people respect her. Very stupid. I'm not going to respect women because you made a women day. I laugh at you, but not at the women. I respect women or men when they deserve respect. If they don't, we don't. Everyone, he should own his own respect. This is about not gender. This is about individual. Now, we are fighting the cult of Muhammad because the cult of Muhammad put women down. So this is how you respect women. Fight those who teach false teaching against women by putting them down. Ban Islam from schools, ban Islam from countries. So in the agenda, they say we are trying to empower women, but then in the United Nation, they ask the United Nation to ban anyone who criticizes Muhammad. So we cannot question Muhammad why it says beat the women at chapter 4, verse number 34. Respect is not a statement, respect is an act. And all of those who come with those days are a bunch of hypocrites. And the whole purpose is not just to make you be a customer, you know, like Mother Day. Okay, what what they do now? Uh, he will go and buy a gift to his mother. <clears throat> so your mother all the year long, you don't know her. Now you decide to buy her a gift. What? Uh, what is? What the heck is that? And then. Because now it become they make they force it to be a tradition, it it doesn't have a meaning, because now the mother she knew her son will give her a, you know a gift because it's a mother day not because he remember her voluntarily. You know what I mean? If there is no day and you, then you buy a gift to your mother, she will be happy. Oh, he remember me, but it's a mother day. The mother, she go home, she find her kids buying, and most of the, the, the gifts are garbage. Like, you know, when I was in Europe, I noticed how some uh, women, uh, it, it's part of tradition, so, so much uh, like uh, buying flowers, you know. I will never buy a flower to women, even over my dead body. I don't believe in those things. What you would do with the flowers? A big bouquet of a flower for okay. You have a woman, you love her, she your wife, whatever fine say, and you give her a big bouquet, she put it in the in the in the vase for two days and then she throw it in the garbage. That means both of you are stupid, you throw your money in the garbage. What about you buy her something useful? This is my philosophy. They make those days just to make you a customer who spend his money, make the rich richer, and you stay stupid poor. If you love your wife, you remember your wife. And if she loves you, it doesn't matter what you bring her. It doesn't matter. If you if you if you cut little tiny flower from the grass and the flower in the size of your finger cost you nothing if she really care for you and she love you she will find it the most beautiful gift ever women like flowers I don't care I like flowers too but I will not buy them <laughs> I like flowers to stay in their place put them in the garden put them in the yard what I will buy her maybe a gun <laughs> so she can protect herself when she is home alone <laughs> so so no man can you know act like a terrorist on her you know if uh, because she is a female i will i will i will buy her something useful always when you buy do you remember just a few uh, 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 maybe 10 days ago we said never buy something unless it is there is a use for it don't waste your life and your time. You know, 
romance have nothing to do with the material. So, if you are not going to be happy unless your husband or fiancé he bought who he bought you a, a bouquet of a flower, that means you don't love him. You don't care for him. What if he's poor? You are forcing him to spend the little money he have to buy you stupid things. I have my own way of seeing things. You don't have to agree with me for sure, but I believe all those all those days are commercial days, and the crowd is like goats. You know, they go with the trend. Everybody go like there is a, a festival. You know, people go by tens of thousands. You know, they will step in your feet. You know, they will fight. You know, they will smell the sweat of people when they're fought. And you know, there's violence will be. And then you will know you might get arrested. And you know, there's terrorists. And then you go. Uh, for me, I, I find it very stupid. I will never go there. What if I, I, wish, I I'll watch it in TV. Sitting, drinking my tea and my coffee, watching the stupidity of people. Life is so short. Oh, okay, this is a nice philosophy. So Robert is saying, CP, life is short. Flower re remind, uh, reminded to everybody. Hmm. So because life is so short, you walk like a donkey. I'm not insulting you, Robert, sorry. I don't mean so. Uh, you walk like a donkey for five, six hours, so and you spend it buying a flower. Hmm. And now you made life longer. Eh, that's that is a philosophy too. Well, I wish you good luck buying flowers every day. You know what? If I am you, I will never buy food. Because life is short, and we need to make a reminder, remind it of everything, you know. Just buy flowers. Right? Anyway, not our topic for today. The perfume sweat story is a lie. Uh, Abdul saying to me, the perfume sweat story is a lie. Mostly this is a fakira. Let us see. <coughs> the perfume story is a lie. But we show the reference. <coughs> Hello? Hello? I'm fine. Who's talking? Who? Uh, Fakira changing her voice again. Uh, son of Muta. Anyway, you don't need, you know, you don't need to take my advice. For me, I believe that you have to be smart in life. You know, if you are rich, you have too much money, you do not know what to do with buy flowers, you know, send her a truck of flowers. Ah, you know, you have too much extra. You will not take anything with you to the grave, no problem. But most of people, they are average, normal, you know, working hard people, trying to make a living. And then what do you do? You spend your money on stupid things. Like somebody want to get married. What do you do? They go and buy a diamond ring. A ring. Cost what? Seven, at least $7,000. Why? What the heck is that? Who is the one who came with this stupid diamond ring? Stupidity. And then one day you got bankrupt, you tried to say it, they will not even take it from you for $500. People do not know the value of money. They fool you, my friend, they fool you. All jewelry stores, when they sell you jewelry, they are ripping you apart. You are not buying gold. You are not. The value of the gold you buy or diamond is not even there. But anyway, people, they have their own philosophy. I have my own. And this will remind me of a verse in the Quran, the chapter of the hummus. Anyone remember the chapter of the hummus? Which is called Al-Kafirun. In the chapter of the hummus, Al-Kafirun, Muhammad, he decided to come with his own philosophy. Chapter 109. So, Muhammad, he received a book of philosophy from his God, Allah. 
signed by Andrew Tate, pimp, house, warehouse master. So it says, okay, okay, those who are uh, kuffar, okay, oh, say you reject faith, okay, kuffar, I worship not what you worship, nor you worship what I worship, and I will not worship what you worship because you don't worship what I worship, and I will never worship what you worship, and you will never worship, and you don't worship what I worship because you don't have worship, and I want to worship, and I have my worship, and you have yours, and you will say thank you very much. So if you change the word worship with Hamas, so you say, O Kufar, I eat not, like the word eat, I eat not what you eat, and you will not do eat what I eat, because I will not do eat what you eat, and you will never do eat what I eat, because I don't eat what you eat, and you will never ever eat what I eat, for I have my food, you have yours. And here where I got inspired with the philosophy I got, you know. I mean, look at this religion, man. I mean, look how deep they hate. And not only that, this is a false prophecy because all of those kuffar later, they became Muslims. But he just said they will never worship what I worship. <laughs> he said he will never worship what I worship. Never. Hmm? And later, all of them became Muslims. The chapter of the Hummus. I eat not what you eat. And then they say to you, who, might, who can make Quran like the Quran? <laughs> it's like a woman, she is proud about her husband. She say, who of you is a stupid like my husband? <laughs> who can be, more, can be more stupid? Look, look, actually, there's a hadith. Remind me of Aisha, she said. Who of you have penis like my prophet, my husband? And the Muslim translate, who of you control his penis like the prophet? What the heck? He really controlled it? And you know, when I saw this hadith first time, look at this. I mean, Women, they cannot put perfume in the street, but women, they can go live on air and tell her the husband he used to kiss them. Okay, Allah sends her peace be upon him and Allah praise him. He used to kiss me while observing fast. Look, the women, she is fasting and the problem. And remember, Muhammad have no teeth because somebody broke his, you know, teeth, a throw a rock at him. So I can imagine how Muhammad he recited the Quran. Okay, that's exactly like Muhammad. So now, while observing fast, and who among you control his desire? This is the Muslim translation, but in Arabic it says, "Woman minkumu yamiliku irabu." Who of you control his penis like the Prophet? So the Aisha she is so proud of the Prophet. He is controlling himself. I mean, how he's controlling you and he's kissing you and thundering you. And the funny, what make it more funny, Aisha, supposedly she, she was a virgin when she married Muhammad. Remember, she was a kid. So she must be a virgin. But how she can compare between Muhammad penis control and others? Did she experience other men? It's like you are having sex with your wife and your wife, she says, man, you are the best. And <laughs> how she knew? <laughs> you know what I mean? How Aisha she knew that Muhammad is the best in sexuality, controlling his penis, unless she have experience that there is many men, they cannot control it. You know, it's like the guy who said to his friend, "My my friend says she is a virgin," and he said, "How you know?" He said, "She said that." So the guy he uh, it's a dirty joke. I'm not going to say it anyway. Anyway, so he did some trick, and uh, like you know, when she saw it, he said, "Wow, I never saw <clears throat> like this before." <laughs> but she is a virgin. Remember, yeah. Do we have any Muhammadan? Yeah, always when you want to compare, in order to compare, you have to, to be expert. Uh, if I say this car is the best car I drove, 
Well, I'm taught because I drove many cars or motorcycle. Or I say, this is the gun. This is the best gun I shot with because I shot with every, you know, uh, 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 kind of gun. So I can compare. But how a woman, she was, she is a virgin, supposedly. Uh, she, she knew. Like, if I say the best shotgun is a Beretta, uh, patrol uh, the a300 how I know because I shot with many shotguns so I know now that this is really fantastic gun the recoil the shooting the holding the target uh, you know many many good options self-cleaning but how a woman she never have a man before she can say such a statement no answer Any Muhammadan? <clears throat> Nobody? Zero Muhammadan. Take, take a beer. <laughs> and you know, imagine your wife, she go live on air, and she say, my husband, he kissed me. And he control his penis. I mean, what kind of a woman this woman is? And not only that, she is challenging the other Muslims, all the Muslim men. Hmm. I mean, Muhammad, he control himself, but there is a chapter in the Quran. And it was about Aisha, she touched the hair of Muhammad. And Muhammad, his penis could not stand. So he claimed that this is the evil of the night. The Muslim, they translate this chapter as it's about uh, magic. But what Muhammad is trying to say, you see here the translation, it says, مِنْ شَرِّ غَاسِقٍ إِذَا وَقَبْ what the Muslim translate that? And the, from the evil of darkness, night, when it's come in, at the darkness, and between the bracket or the moon, when it's set, goes away. That's false translation. Sharri ghasiqin idha waqab, the evil of the penis when it is standing up. If you don't believe me, read the interpretation of the Muslim themselves. This is not my interpretation. I mean, they lie. They love to lie. So Aisha, she came. Muhammad, he claimed that his penis is not standing up because somebody put a black magic on him. Do we have any Muhammadan? May they, may they. And this is why we understand why people like Mimi Hijab, they make fun of their false prophet because simply Muhammad is an embarrassment for mankind and for Muslim kind people if i can say the word muslim kind hmm. yeah they consider themselves a kind they consider themselves a nation they are because they are racist you know isn't it muhammad he says you are the best nation for between all mankind and what is the make the muslim best nation they are the kkk they are the white supremacists they think they have the right to bring you with the chain around your neck like a dog Am I making things up? No, it's in the front of you. We don't make things up. This is a very Sahih Hadith and this is a very correct Quran. Chapter 3, verse 110. Do we have any Muhammadan? No, Muhammad always have no Viagara. I, I am very convinced that Muhammad have a sexual problem. You see, Muhammad, he piss like women. Muhammad, he act like women. He dress women clothing. He put eyeliner. He like to speak, people to speak about how pretty he is. Muhammad, he kiss men. Muhammad, he wish Osama to be a girl. 
you know so he looked at the boy looking at him you know Aisha she noticed that he is sucking his face he is licking it so to give himself an excuse he said oh I wish Osama was a girl so I can dress her when she gets married what does have to do what you are doing is that how you express your love to a boy you wish him to be a girl Any Mohammedan? Yeah, she was she he was fifty four, she was five going into her six. Remember, six years in Islam is five years in our calendar. Because Islamic calendar is shorter than ours. Do we have any brave Muhammadan? Hello? Any Muhammadan? Mayday, mayday, mayday. Who wanna call me and get reward from Allah? Because when you call and you defend the cult of Muhammad, the God of the cult of Muhammad will reward you. Virgins, boys, wine, Honey, milk, zafaron, a house which is built one brick from gold and one brick from silver. <laughs> and you know what is making me un unhappy? I mean, I don't like to have a house from gold and silver. That is really not good. Imagine, guys, imagine the walls around you. The color is gold and silver. This is sick. This is stupid. Which one is we going to be nicer? To have a house made from nice wood. You feel warm inside it. Or a house made from metal because gold and silver at the end of the day is metal is that correct that's that's stupid and you know a house one brick of gold and one brick of silver one brick of gold actually try to paint your wall you can buy a color gold and silver you can buy them they are cheap make your wall or a room one brick of gold, one brick of silver, and see how stupid ugly it is. For me, I'm not into the gold and the silver. I prefer to have a, a, a cabin house. I mean, it's so beautiful. What gold and silver? Who in the world want to go crazy for such a stupid house? But because Muhammad is a satanic man, he is trying to, you know, to uh, seduce you by gold and silver. We are in heaven. Who want gold and silver? What for? What is the value of gold and silver in heaven? I'm not a fool. Why I'm running from ultimate fault? My friend from his fault, we are running from him. The guy he said to your prophet, the F word. So why I want to call him an ultimate fault? This is only you. You, you use your own name. You come here and you say that. So we can talk about it. You know, no problem. Isn't it you who said the F word to your prophet? Isn't it you who says the Arab who wrote the Hadith are stupid donkeys? Isn't it you who said the Arab are donkeys and Muhammad is a donkey? Isn't it you who said Allah is the F and Muhammad is the MF? Isn't it you who said the Quran is corrupt and the Shad Khalifa took what is not there? Isn't it you who uh, we ask you who is the father of Muhammad who is his wife and you don't accept hadith and you said, uh, like I told you where you tell, where you get this information from, you said from the book of history. So we have a thousand recording of you, my friend. Take them. And make them a book. If you are proud about them, let everybody laugh at you. Rashad Khalifa boy. Son of Muta. Nobody remember you. 
I allow I allow certain rude, filthy people to talk for some time for entertainment, and when the reason is over, the reason is over. We like there is no more milk in the breast of Fakira. We get it all. Get me a real Muslim at least. Do we have any Abdullah? Hmm? Even Muslim don't, they will never welcome them uh, such a girl in their channel. Where is the real stars of the Muslims? Any Muhammadan? No, I don't really have a problem to take calls from all kinds of Muslims. But you know, there is a there is a limit. When we uh, wipe the floor with you, and there is no need, that's it. We have a lot of recording. Anyone can go right now and search for Ultimate Fault Calling Christian Prince. You have tons of recording. Go and laugh. If he is a man, let him take all those recordings, put them in his channel, without editing. So everybody can see. You know the funny about this uh, little girl. She said that you do not know need to know Arabic to understand the Quran. <laughs> so how you understand the Quran? <laughs> you know you do not need Arabic to understand the Quran, but the Quran says we made it in Arabic so you might understand. <laughs> so his God is a stupid. Why Allah he made it in Arabic? Why Allah he sent it in the tongue of the people so they might understand? According to Fakira, you do not need to know Arabic. And not only that, the guy he will teach you even how the word, what the word mean. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we had a good time with her. Any Mohammedan? Look at this stupid verse. This verse alone is enough to prove Muhammad to be a fraud. If Allah never sent a messenger except in the tongue of his own people, that means Muhammad never been sent to any people except the Arab. Very simple. It's in front of you. And even Muhammad himself, who created this verse, is telling you the logical behind her, which is so they might understand. So they, you will not be able to understand unless it is in your language. Allah, don't know, don't Allah knew there's in the future there's translators. He knew, don't Muhammad knew, Allah knew that the book of the Christians translated to many languages in the time of Muhammad. He knew, so he did not say translator, he said, I never send a messenger except in the tongue of his people to the people. So, in their tongue, the prophet have to be from them. So they might understand. And then we find that the Quran, which is supposedly now written in the language the Arab understand, nobody understand. <laughs> right? Who is a Muslim agree with the uh, anything? Every Muslim give you his own understanding of the Quran. Not a single one agree with the other one. Any Muhammadan? Well, like we are, we have zero Muhammadan. You guys, you fail me to bring me uh, customers. Where are the customers? Where is everybody? You are not bringing me customers. The only bug we have is ultimate fart. And because he fart a lot, we don't want to talk to him. Very low. You know, this is my advice actually to anyone who have a Christian channel. Don't allow low-class people to join your life because they speak filthy. They will make your standard go down. You, because you have to speak to them, you, have, you go down. You have to go down with them, you know? Their language is filthy. And then never waste your time with somebody. Don't accept what his prophet said. 
Because if you don't accept the interpretation and the words of his prophet, there's no point. There's no point. This guy, he accepts as he wish. He's not a Muslim. You know, when the Quran uh, said, whoever obey Muhammad, if you remember this uh, ultimate uh, party, uh, I said to her, uh, you have to obey. The Quran says you have to obey uh, first the messenger and then Allah. He says, uh, it says the messenger, not the prophet. <laughs> the messenger, not the prophet. How stupid is that? Are they two, two are they two different people? The messenger, he didn't say the prophet. What the heck is that? Yeah. Anyway. Look like Muhammad, he is multi-personality. They have Muhammad the Prophet, they have Muhammad the Messenger, and they have Muhammad Allah. Hmm. Any Muhammadan. No, the Muslims they go and they seek somebody. They think they can, uh, they can win with him. This is when they call. Uh, otherwise, they will not call. You know, and uh, or if you are like, like mentally ill, uh, like this ultimate uh, forty, you can say whatever you want. You know, say that forty your prophet. You know. The hadith is written by stupid Arab. Uh, he is only Quran and then he explained the Quran as he wished she don't accept any scholar interpretation yeah those people are not really you know they are just a uh, fraud <clears throat> do we have any Muhammadan real Muslim wanna call us anyone You send me Zach and Nag phone. I don't call by phone. Give me his Skype. I will call him. Give me his Skype. I will call him right now. Give me any Muslim Sheikh Skype. I will call him. <coughs> You know, even Muhammad, when the Christian they came to debate him from Nij from Najran, what he said to them? The first day they keep saying to him, Muhammad, we came here to debate you. He refused to say a word. The whole day, those people they came from long, long distance to debate him about his statement about Mary is the sister of Aaron and Jesus. Is the son of Allah and all the stupid things he said. Muhammad the coward, he refused to debate them. Second day, finally he opened his mouth, claiming that he received a verse from Allah. What they were saying, don't debate them. Don't debate them. Invite them to curse party. Read it. You see it? Don't debate them. Because he cannot debate them. The coward, he ran away. And he told them, Allah told me this. Now whoever dispute with you concerning Jesus after the full knowledge has come to you. What full knowledge? Muhammad did not even tell us who is Jesus. Who is Jesus? Hey Muslims, who is Jesus? Any Muslim can tell us? Hey, 
If you go in the Quran, you will see a very funny story. How funny names as in uh, okay, who is Jesus? Jesus is a son of a woman, her name is Maryam. Her father, his name is Umran. But Umran is the father of Moses. And the mother of Jesus was a was a was a was a nun. <laughs> But I thought that uh, nuns and monks in Christianity is a fabrication of the Christians. But as you see, the Umran, the wife of Umran, she is Ma uh, Ma Maryam mother, and he is the grandfather of Asa. <laughs> Hummus. Hummus. This is the book of Hummus. So suddenly Muhammad, he come with a new name for the grandfather of Jesus. What his name is Amran. Who is the father of Moses? Amran. Who is Maria? Maria, sister of Moses. And later, when they told him that you stupid, Maria is not a sister of Moses, man. What are you talking about, sister of Aaron? There is long period between them. But Muhammad, he tried to fix that one, but it's too late because he already he made Amran the father of Maria, the father of. It's in front of you. Stupidity is beyond. I mean, it's obvious this guy is a scam. It's like somebody will teach you history. He is a professor in history and he do not know who is the brother of who. It's like saying like, uh, you know, Joe Biden is the cousin of uh, uh, Alexander the Great. What the heck? I mean, do you know what, what year we are and what Alexander the Great he was? This is what Muhammad did. And ask yourself, Muslims, why in the world the Christians and the Jews will change their history and their books written long before Islam. I mean, even the names of the mother of uh, the father, the grandfather of uh, uh, the father of Maryam, we change it too. Why suddenly became Amran? And look, the holy chapter is called Chapter of Amran. And according to the Quran, just to show you how stupid Muhammad is, read carefully with me the chosen people between all mankind. Is the family of Ibrahim. Read carefully, Muslims. This is not my words. The family of uh, uh, Allah, he chose Adam. And he chose Noah. The family of Ibrahim. That's the family. Only. And the family of Amran. Above all mankind. Where is Muhammad? And how the family of Amran... I mean, who are they? Like, when you say to me, like you, I just say the family of Ibrahim, not everybody from Ibrahim, correct? How we prove that? It says the family of Amran. Because if Ibrahim is the father of the Jews, well, you not need to say the family of Amran. That's mean the family of Ibrahim only are the chosen one. And then from the Jews, the family of Amran. Okay, but Jesus and Moses, they are not from the same. I mean, Mary is not from the same tribe of Moses. They have nothing to do with each other. And they are the chosen above all mankind. Above all, all mankind. It's in the front of your eyes. Hmm. Do we have any Muhammadan? All right, look like we are out of customers. So we want to say thank you guys for being here. Did we have a good time? Try to challenge yours, you know, your shake. If you know any shake with long beard, someone really, you know, not uh, kids like those, uh, you know, kids in YouTube. Uh, anyone can call me anytime. But uh, like one of you, he said to me, there's a Muslim from uh, uh, Malaysia, I think. He want to debate me, etc. And he want to set the time. I said, there is no need. They said, there's no need for this drama. I go live, call me. You know? However, if you have somebody he claimed to be a big sheikh, we can set a time. Like, we prove that he is a big sheikh. Then we can set a time and we can tell her. But we don't want to uh, say next month. I don't have time for the stupid things. Uh... Tell me tomorrow, I will be tomorrow live waiting for you. Tell me after one hour, I will be live.
There is no need for to prepare for me. Not next month, not next, and there is no topic. Call me and let us have a conversation. If you are a scholar, you can handle any topic. Is that correct? Those who choose topics in advance, they are not people of knowledge. They need to prepare. They need to go and print a thousand answer, put it in the front of them in the screen. Call me, and my topic always is Islam. So don't choose any topic. Islam, call me and tell me whatever you want. And we go from there. Let us see how good you are. Let us see how good your prophet is. Very simple. Thank you all for being here. May the Lord bless you. And by this, we are done for today. We pray to the Lord that the Lord will make more Muslim watch and see. And the truth will set them free. That Muhammad is nothing but a fraud. And nobody in the world would like to have a house made of gold and silver and full of little boys as slaves. A heaven of slaves is not heaven. Human being who strive for justice, he will not accept to have slaves for eternity. For this is not justice. Why I will be a master and he will be a slave? They will say to you, well, Allah, he made them to be your slaves. What's the problem? That truly telling me that Allah must be the devil. Because there is a problem. There is a problem. You know, I went to many uh, countries around the world. I went and I met many people. I like last time I was traveling there I met people they have a driver. I treated the driver the same as I treat the boss of the driver. I don't even let him open the door of the car for me. I shake hands with him. He took me to the airport, I gave him a hug. The same as I give a hug to those who they are the boss. His bosses. I treated the driver the same as I treat the one who hired the driver to my to be my driver. So a person of justice, he will not accept injustice in the house of God or in the place of God. And heaven supposedly is where everything is perfect. There is no way that the perfect God will make an perfect heaven full of injustice. Just because I pray to God and I worship God, then he will make 80,000 little boys to serve me. And they are even kids. Kids. That will make it even more ugly. So to, to enjoy my life, according to Muhammad, I have to enslave 80,000 little boys. What kind of heaven this heaven is? And this is the reward for the lowest Muslim. This is the, the lowest reward. The heaven is 100 devil. If you remember, uh, uh, ultimate 40, uh, he, she claimed that she didn't accept the hadith. But then she said, the heaven is a hundred floor. I said, where you get this from? <laughs> He said, it's like, like, like under the floor. I said, this, okay, where do you get it from? <laughs> it's from the hadith. So the heaven of Muhammad is a 100 floor. And the lowest floor will have what you see in the front of you. That is disgusting. 80,000 little boys enslaved for eternity. At least in lifetime, if you get to be enslaved by somebody, you die one day and your soul will be free, hoping that the Lord will give you a better life in heaven. But there, that is hell. So if that is heaven for me, that is hell for those slaves. Who want to be a servant forever to somebody watching him having sex like an animal? And not to forget to mention how filthy is heaven, the value of it, the ethic of it, Everybody is effing everybody. The sperm smell is all over. Instead of perfume and flowers, like the Muslim, you search Islamic heaven, you will see the Muslim, they have paint of flowers and roses and etc. But in reality, there's nothing but penises. Even Muhammad, he described how they would have sex.
dahman dahman which mean he will he will he will f so hard non-stop he described the penis he described the size of the penis he was he said and his penis will never go limp extremely very filthy sexual you know garbage and the bedroom is made from pearl and the distance between them is the distance between Damascus and Yemen, the capital of Yemen. Look how big your room, full of boys, slaves, and women for sex. That is silly. That is stupid. That is disgusting. That is even against the good inside us as a human. You know, even when people, they own a dog, like, uh, when I look at the West, how they, most of Amer American or Western, they treat their dogs better than Allah will treat his followers. And I'll explain it to you why. Because there is an exchange of emotion between the owner of the dog and the dog. The dog, he follow you willingly. He can run, but he follow you. We call him loyal, right? But in the heaven of Islam, you will become a dog as a slave, but you cannot run anyway. You don't even choose the master. And his master is not good to you. He don't even feed you. You are just made to be his slave for eternity. In America, you will find Americans, they spend a lot of money over their dogs. In fact, Sometimes they make me angry because a dog in America has better life than many human beings in the Middle East. They have better beds, they have better food, they have better health insurance, they have even dentists. And if you beat a dog, you go to jail. In Islam, if you beat your wife, you don't go to jail. Which means a dog in a Western society have more right than a human being in a Islamic society it's a fact go and say one statement against any prince or president in Islamic countries you will disappear literally I remember once I was going to leave uh, uh, my apartment uh, I have a screen door so I opened the door from inside and, you know, I want to go outside the screen door and there's a dog, he's sleeping behind the screen door so I can't open it. So I was talking to the dog like, hello, buddy, move. I pushed the dog a little bit with the screen door, he don't want to move. He don't want to move, you know. Now, you can beat him, but that is not right. And in USA too, if you, if you like, <laughs> do something, anything not right with a dog, you will go to jail, literally. So I had to call the police, tell them there's a dog is refusing to leave. You know, I tried to push the door, he stopped barking. There's one way, either I get, uh, you know, go to and confront with him, and God knows what will happen next. Or I, so I chose to call the police, and then the policeman, he went to his car, he have, uh, he have some dog food with him, he start talking to the dog, come here, come here, please, yeah, let's go, you know, his majesty finally, he decided to move his ass and I was able to go out if this dog is in the Middle East if you if, if you a human in the front of the door you imagine what will happen to you and the funny is they say to you that Islam is the way of life it's a way of life that you can beat your children and your wife like dogs but dogs in America, they have more right than you as a human in the Middle East. Uh, yeah, actually, I feel I feel bad really for animals in the Middle East. Dogs, cats, I mean, don't go and see how they treat them. You know, here, they have body care, manicure, they have nice beds, they have a heater in the bed, they have uh, candies for them. I mean, you watch the commercial in the TV, and half of it for, uh, for, for for food for cats and dogs.
Anyway, <clears throat> so a heaven base in tempting me by abusing others, that is nothing but the heaven of Satan. Because remember, Satan he promised me heaven too. And this is the heaven of Satan, a place of slavery, master and slave. You will abuse 80,000 little boys, so you just, you are happy. Can't I be happy to be in heaven without any servant, especially in this heaven? There is no laundry. No laundry. According to the Quran, according to the Hadith, Muslims, they will not even sweat. They will never have a bathroom. They will, their clothes will never get wrinkled. They will be wearing green silk. They will never need to take a shower. Actually, they will take a shower when they see Allah each time every Friday. Remember, the house have four days. There's one of them. When you go to the Allah, like they, they have a night club of Allah every Friday, uh, you receive invitation. The second you open that door, you will be showered by mask. So Allah will not smell the fart of the Muslim. All right. Anyway, I want to say thank you all for being here. I hope today we enjoyed our time and we learned something useful. Until we see you maybe tomorrow, God is willing. Christ is Lord and Islam is a fraud and we prove it every day. Take care and God bless you.